Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. I'm connected directly to ESX02, so directly to an ESX server. To create a new virtual machine, I'm going to right click on my host and click on new virtual machine. Now I could do that or I can click on the new virtual machine button in the upper left hand corner. So I'll go ahead and click on that. This is going to bring us to the create new virtual machine wizard. And initially we have two options here under configuration. We can set up a typical configuration or a custom configuration. Now both of these configurations make the same virtual machine. It's just whether or not we have more options as far as how we configure our virtual hardware during this setup wizard. We could always go back and modify our virtual machine later on if we'd like. So I'm going to go through a typical setup first. Click Next. Here's where we're going to give it the virtual machine name. Now this is just the virtual machine as it shows up here in our vCenter client. This is also the folder it creates on our data store to store the virtual machine files. It doesn't have anything to do with what the computer name is within the operating system, whatever uh, you know operating system we're going to be installing. Now, personally, I like to keep the names the same just for consistency. So I know Desktop01, for example, within Windows Vista on this virtual machine, it's called Desktop01 as well. So I'm going to call this one Server01. I'll go ahead and click Next. Here's where I select a data store, and we're going to get into data stores a lot uh, because it's a big part of ESX and vCenter. Uh, basically, it's where your virtual machine files are stored. So you can see capacity here. This one has 136 gig total and 115 gigs free. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on this data store. Click Next. Here's where we select the guest operating system, and when we do that, it gives us a preset configuration for our virtual hardware that uh, ESX knows can work with that particular operating system. So for example, Microsoft Windows, let's say I want to install Windows Server 2008 64-bit. I'll go ahead and select that. If I want to install a Linux operating system, I would just select Linux, go down here and select my Linux operation our uh, operating system, same with Novell, Solaris, and there's also other down here. You can see we've got a few other options like DOS, things like that. So I'm going to go back to Microsoft Windows, go back to our Windows 2008 64-bit server, click Next. Now we're going to select our virtual disk size. Generally this is going to be your C drive for Windows operating systems. It gives us a default, a suggested value of 40 gigs, and we can make it whatever we like if we want to change it. For example, if I want to change it to 30 gigs, I'll go ahead and type in 30. Now we can either allocate and commit space on demand. This is called thin provisioning, and we're going to get into this later on, what this means exactly. But very briefly, I can tell you uh, it takes up the amount of space on the data store that you're actually using on the virtual disk. So that's probably a little confusing right now, but it'll make sense later on. And we also have an option down here to support clustering features like fault tolerance. Again, we'll get, we'll get into that later on. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And we have one final option here. We can edit the virtual machine settings before completion, so before this virtual machine is actually created. Now we can also always edit them afterwards, but there may be situations where we want to edit it before that virtual machine is created. If we did, we'd just check this box. So go ahead and click Finish. And it's going to go ahead and create it. You can see it's in progress. It's usually created pretty fast. And there it is. It's all done. So here's our Server 01. And notice we didn't have the ability to set the amount of memory or how many processors it had in that Create New Virtual Machine wizard. If I take a look at it, go to Edit Settings, it gave it some default values. For example, memory, it gave it 4 gigs. CPU, it gave it one processor. Well, what if we wanted to set this up during the install? Or, I'm sorry, during the create new virtual machine wizard. Well, we can do that 
using the custom configuration. So I'm going to right click on our host, create a new virtual machine. This time I'm going to select custom. Click next. And I'm going to give this one the name of server02. Click next. I'm going to go ahead and put it on this same data store. Click next. Here we can select our virtual machine hardware version. 7 is the latest and if we're using all vSphere ESX4 servers we want to use version 7. If we possibly need to migrate this virtual machine back to an ESX 3.5 or ESX3 environment we'd want to use virtual machine hardware version 4. So I'm going to leave it at version 7, click next and I'll go ahead and select the operating system here so this is the same as we did before this time I'll just select Windows 2008 32-bit click next you can see now we have the option to select the number of processors I'll go ahead and give it two. click next we can also select the memory I'm gonna drop it down only give this virtual machine one gig click next we can select how many NICs we want to give it. That's how many network cards this virtual machine can have. And yes, a virtual machine can have more than one. And it can have more than one IP address and be on more than one network. Here's where we select what network it's going to be on. We only have one setup because we're actually going to get into uh, V switches and networks later on. We can select the adapter type. Generally, you want to go with the adapter type that's selected for your particular operating system that you specified in a previous screen. So I'll go ahead and click Next. Here we select the SCSI controller. Again, normally you want to go with uh, the default, but we do have some other options, including VMware, Para Virtual, which, again, we're going to talk about later on. This is new with vSphere. It's actually not supported for your system drive or whatever drive your operating system is booting off of so generally you wouldn't want to add it at this point. Go ahead and click next. Here's where we select the type of virtual disk we want to use. We can create a new one which is what we did in the previous setup for our virtual machine. We can actually use an existing virtual disk if we like. So let's say we copied a virtual disk or we already had one set up we can select this option and then select where the VMDK is, that's a virtual disk, and attach it to this virtual machine. Or we cannot create a disk at all. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. Click Next. And let's just make this one 20 gigs in size. And I'm going to select Thin Provisioning. Click Next. Oh, let me go back one second. We can also select where we want to store this new VMDK. It doesn't have to be stored with the virtual machine, so we could actually put it on a different data store if we'd like. We would just select it, click Browse, and select the data store we wanted to put it on. I'm going to store it with the virtual machine, though. Click Next. And we can select the virtual device node. You can see we have a lot of different SCSI IDs we can put it on, or we could even put it on an IDE drive. We can make this disk independent, and we'll get into that later on. Click Next, and Finish. And here it is. It's going to create it. It should just take a second. There it is. And you can see how the custom configuration just gives you a lot more options. Now, we could also go in and configure these manually by going into the Edit Settings. But that's how to create a new virtual machine.